Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to continue talking about advanced C# -sharp features, and we're going to talk about uh, overloading operators. Overloading operator is um, explaining to the compiler, say what to do whenever we want to do a a sum, a rest, a division, or when they want to compare something, things like that. So. In order to understand that, is just to have a better functionality in our code. So let's let's get started. Let's create a new .NET application. Let's call this overloading operators. And let's put this one in over in uppercase just in case. Overloading operators. There you go. Restore succeed and okay, perfect. So I have the old application right here. Let me just open it. Let me open a folder, and this folder will be. You know, get back to my teacher overloaded operators. There you go. Let's wait this to be loaded, and it will ask me to compile. It will say yes. Go ahead. And I will save this one because I don't like those four characters for the spacing. Perfect. So let's do something really, really simple. Let's change this to using, because we will need it later. And let's delete all this. Cool. And let's do a simple integer A equal 3. Integer B. Equal to, and we do a simple, a simple addition. Let's do integer c equal a plus two. Right? If we do a simple console, red line. C. Let me open my terminal. Hmm, I see I have problems. Oh yeah, this one. It says that it's unnecessary. Let me save it. Uh, Oh, oops. Yes. It should be something like this. Um, what is the internal here? I'm talking about system. There you go. Okay, let's do done it. Run. And we know that the value of C should be 5, right? We are have integers with different values. We making a sum with the plus operator, right? And we can actually see the output. That operator also works with strings. So if we have some kind of a string as one equal hello, and string is two equal, and there's all the space there, there. But there's a simple space, let's keep it like that. And a string s3 equal there. Right? We can actually do a simple a string complete equal s1 plus s2 plus s3. Right? And as a simple console right line complete. If we execute that, this adding those will be a concatenation of our string, and we have the hello there, right? It's working as it's supposed to. 
But you see that it's actually using the same operator. It has one with behavior. When we're working with integer, when we're working with doubles, triangle numbers, pretty much. And I have another behavior when we're working with strings. Well, that behavior can be changed and can be overloaded in another kind of behavior. And we are going to see that in this video. So which operator can be changed? We can actually, you, you will see those in, in your book. The table 11 one have all the C sharp operator and which one of those can be overloaded or not, right? It's really straightforward. And actually, let's actually see the example for the book and explain what is actually happening there. So we saw the, the beneficial one. Let's comment all this out. And let's create a new class called point or coordinate or whatever. Right. And in this class, let me just copy this content that came from the book directly. There you go. Hmm, interesting. Let's keep playing this. So the class point is a simple X and Y. And when we have the constructor, we specify the X position and the Y position. That's it. And when we print it to a string, we just overriding it, sending a curly bracket, sorry, a square bracket with the two variables in there. Pretty much, right? It's a simple, um, it's a really simple class. So let's say, let's create here. And now we can uncomment this. We can actually say something like this. Let's create a point and let's call this one first, right? And this is going to be a, a new point. And let's say, I don't know, 100 and 200, right? Let's call another point called second. And let's do this one to be new. I don't know, 50 and 150. Right? We have two different points in there. We can actually print those first. Let's print first and uh, let's print second too. Oops, I don't know what I did there. Get out, second. Let's run it. And we should be able the output with the score bracket for point number one and point number two. Perfect. Okay, so we have the value of those points like this. Um, let's actually just to have a better output. Let's put this one like this in first point. Right, and let's pretty much copy all this over to here. And this will be second. And this should be second, right? Just to have a better output. Let's say it. Perfect. First point and second point. Cool. What happened when we do point three equal a first the second? Right? We have an error. Because the plus operator cannot be applied operate for point and a point, right? What we know that need to happen is, well, when we have X and Y, and this is basic algebra, the X get added and the Y get added. So the new point should be 150, 350, right? But C sharp doesn't know what to do about this, right? And it'll give you this error, like it cannot be applied. How are we able to apply that 
correctly and let's actually copy this for now and let's put third point and let's put the third here and let's still call it three let's call it third right and we have a compiler we try to run it it's going to break right there because this needs to be fixed or line 25 in this case how we do that well it's just as simple as override it in our on our classes so here we have the point definition and you can do it through here or you can do it in an abstract or in a partial whatever you want to have it right but let, let's actually try to do it over here and let's overload a point and those ones should pro usually are need to be public so it should be accessible let's do a static right and let's call this point operator So we have our point operator is going to be overloaded so, and we need to define which point it need to be right we need to in this case it's going to be the at one and we need to send the definition of the entry point we are going to send to here a point p1 and the other one should be a point p2 right and this is pretty much what we're going to be doing is going to create a new point so whenever we have the operator of two different points we're going to create a new point that will have p1 x plus p2 x comma and the second number should be p1 y plus p2 y And that's it. With this, we'll specify you will receive two different points, and you will create a new one when you have that operator. Well, you will sum the x values and the y values and send this parameter to create a new one. That actually got rid of this error, and we're able just to run it. And we see that the third point is there, is 150 and 350. Pretty neat, right? And we can go on and continue doing those. Um, let's try to do the fourth one. Point fourth equal first minus second. And we will have the same issue here, right? port and let's copy this over here port and the issue is that operator cannot be over it doesn't know what to do about it well it's as simple they're going to the class definition or the abstract or the partial whatever you had it and create a new static point operator and we find a new one and we find what to do about it it will be do a rest in those to element but pretty much we just get in a new point but that's it this will allow us to have something like this it's working right the four point we have the value correctly because now he knows what to do about it and and we can go on go on we can actually do point five for example fifth equal first plus 50 hey what about it like what to do about this right I, I don't know well it's pretty much the same we just need to work around the definition in this case if I want to add 50 that means that I want to add 50 to x and 50 to y Let's say that is that the thing that I want to do here. So we just proceed, take the nearest one, being lazy the way that I'm doing it, 
So whenever you send a point and an integer, let's call this x, integer um, number, whatever. So we just do on a plus number, um, be way to plus number. And this is working. We don't have the error, and we should be able to see 115 to 150. What about the other way around? Right? Well, it still doesn't know about it, so you need to be explicit, which is one of those. So this is really familiar, really like the last one, with the difference that the integers goes first, right? So we just have the correct order, and we can do the operation, and the operation is there. And you can move over with the rest, uh, and the, actually the book has the really good examples. So for example, what about the plus plus operator? Well, the plus plus operator can be handled with something like this. You just send one point and the point is going to be increased by one. Well, what about the equal? How to compare two different uh, points? Well, we can actually do something like this. We say we send an object and if the object to a string is the same as the string that we are sending, we are pretty much fine with that right what about with the real equal operator so um this one records a matching not equal and let me point the other one something like this, and we can actually call the equal because something that is a method that we already override through here. So we can actually do the kind of definitions and you can do all your validations and you can do whatever you want to do here. That way you can actually increase or change the value or actually the behavior of the different point, right? This one is a really good example because we created a method, right? We override it actually, the equals method. So we is apply it to here, and we say what to do about it, and then we can actually use it later in or override operator for the equals and the not equal. By the way, did you see the symbols right here? In reality, the symbol is the this one and this one together. But I, I have it like when I put it like that, I just create a real uh, symbol for myself, right? The same with this equal, you, it looks like a long one. Well, in reality, it's, it's two, two, two times the same one. When you put it together, my Visual Studio Code, where it goes, you just put it there. And when you do the three ones, it's do something like that, right? So it's just to have that differentiated right there. But, um, this is how it works, and this is what you actually do, and override your operator. So you can actually have your math, or whatever you want to put it there, or whenever you want to compare it, you will do the business logic in this right part. And this business logic was really simple, in reality. But at the end, you, because you can be as complex as you want, you can actually go and say like, I don't know, um, you want to add it only if that record is already on the database. So you can go to a database, verify is there, do comparison and things like that, and then proceed with, with that one or not, right? Stop like that. So you can be as complex as you want, depending what the need that you have here. But for now, I hope that this is understandable. Just remember, any question, any doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody.